I'm going to ask you a question that will change the way you work. How would you use your time if you only had one hour a day to work towards your goals? When I started framing it like this, I realized something so interesting. 80% of our studying time is wasted doing useless stuff. And recently I had exams that I would usually spend hours working for, but these ones just seemed way easier. Whilst my friends were all doing four or five hours of work a day, I was waking up doing one or two and then chilling for the, the rest of the day I was doing nothing and it's not like this has taken a hit to my results because I'm still on track to get all A's so after asking myself this question what would I do if I only had one hour in a day to work towards my studying goals suddenly all of that highlighting and note taking seems absolutely useless and the main things that I would definitely focus on would be like your self testing and your recalling and anything like that and it, I guess if you chose to do those highlighting and note taking you wouldn't get very far with your one hour you wouldn't get the grades that you wanted and since then I've gone from wasting around 80% of my studying time to probably only 10 or 20% so in this video I'll teach you how you can study for only one two or three hours a day and still achieve your dream grades let's say you're following the very common pomodoro technique and if you don't know what this is basically you work for like 20 or 30 minutes and then you take a five minute break and you do that repeatedly over like a few hours and then you're constantly taking like a few minute breaks so let's look at it on this very artistic graph and see how pomodoro affects your attention let's say you start working and your attention's increasing right you're going to keep getting better you're going to get better and then suddenly you take that break, you dip down, your attention is no longer on that task that you were at. And then you go again, you're ready to go again, and your attention's going up, this time a little bit slower and a little bit slower, and it plateaus a bit higher because you're thinking about the TikTok you were just scrolling on. And then you take your break and it plummets back down, this time below the curve. And then, you know, you try to focus again, this time it's increasing slower and slower, going at a more steady rate, and you take your break and it comes all the way down, probably further this time and then you go again and then it goes down that's probably not a very good graph but you can see how your attention is affected over time doing the pomodoro technique now let's look at it from a point of view where you sit down and you just work continuously for a long period of time so your attention it'll go up as you're carrying on and then you'll hit like an occasional dip and it'll go like that and then you'll hit carry on and you'll get more focus you'll hit occasional dip and it'll go like that but you keep working and then there's only like a certain point that your attention can go to so let's say it plateaus at this point goes down, plateaus here, goes down a bit more, and then by the end of it, you're down like it. The difference in this is that you haven't had those huge breaks below and your attention has gone so much higher and stayed there for a much longer period of time. So sometimes when I study, I will literally just study for one and a half hours in the morning and that's it. I've done the work for my day because you get so much done in that in a really focused period of time. I used to do the Pomodoro technique. I used to do 20 minutes here, 20 minutes there. I literally got nothing done because it was so broken up and my attention was so focused on the last five minute break where, I don't know, I was on my phone, I was watching YouTube for that five minutes. And instead I learned to just do it all in one go, get it done and then not have to worry about it. You know, if I have a lot of work to do, sometimes I'll even allocate some free time, like a full afternoon, where I just sit down and do a full task for a long period of time. A full afternoon of just bashing out something that's really difficult and getting it done and not having to worry about it again for the upcoming weeks. So you've got an assignment that's due. You could just allocate one afternoon where you have to go at that assignment for the rest of the day. And then once you've got that done, you've got two or three weeks to just chill, to do nothing and not have to worry about that thing. Recently had some mock exams and for these exams, I chose to do things differently. I use school hours to make the most of my free time while I'm there to make sure I have all of my resources done I'm ready so that as soon as it comes to the exam, I can just sit down and get straight to work. This is a common mistake that so many students make. They forget that making resources probably takes more time than actually learning those resources, than actually revising those resources. So plan ahead. You don't have to cram it all into the last day. Make the resources while you're in school. Use that time, maybe sacrifice the occasional break or lunch to make those resources have them ready and then when it comes to exam season you have to do half the work because you're not having to make self test sheets flashcards or anything like that finally there's one key part of studying that i changed when going from gcse's to a levels that has completely enhanced the way that i study a lot of people don't actually know what learning is and if i were to define learning it would be interrupting the forgetting curve now if you don't know what the forgetting curve is it's basically this concept that over time you start to forget what you've learned and this reveals something that you can exploit all you have to do is interrupt that curve three days later go over that content again 10 days later do it again a month later go over it again a year later, go over it again, you get the idea. The more you interrupt that forgetting curve, which is going down like this, it then goes like that. 
and then like that, and then like that, and then eventually it flatlines and you don't forget it. It stays as part of your long-term memory. And that's how simple learning is. It's just going over something multiple times over a long space of time. It's as simple as that. To recap, instead of doing short bursts of studying, do big deep work blocks where you focus on one hard task like self-testing, flashcards, anything like that. Also, prepare months in advance for your exams so that when it comes to your exams, you're not cramming to get as many possible revision resources made you already have them there, ready and waiting for you. And finally, recall contents to interrupt that forgetting curve. Constantly go over them and refresh your mind of them. Just before you go, building these habits of studying for long periods of time, doing the hard tasks like self-testing isn't easy at all, and it took me months to perfect them. So you can click this next video, which will help you instantly start doing it.